Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Decorum series, 16 parishes located around the town of Hemel Hempstead in the county of Hertfordshire. Let's go and check one of them out. Hello folks, welcome back to Hertfordshire again. We're not in North Hertfordshire this time though, we're in a different district. This is the borough of Decorum, and behind me you can see a pub. One of two pubs in this parish, one of the smallest in the district of Decorum. This is Flaunden. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Hertfordshire folks and to the borough of Decorum. Although for this first episode in the series, technically speaking, we're actually in a Buckinghamshire village. At least that would have been the case 200 years ago. Normally when we say things like that, it's a result of the county boundary moving. Not here though. In Flaunden's case, the entire village moved. You see, in the 1800s, Old Flaunden, which is no longer existent, sat on the banks of the River Chess between Latimer and Cheney's, one and a half miles away to the south. The Doomsday Book does not mention Flaunden, but it does provide a picture of what the area might have looked like at that time, mainly wilderness, but with water mills along the chess. In the 18th century, that village slowly began to decline, and the new village expanded at the top of a hill. The reason for its relocation is believed to be a combination of the plague and some flooding from the river. By the end of the 19th century, only two cottages from the original village and an orchard remained in their original place. The old village is now lost, but the modern village of Flaunden now flourishes. It has two pubs, a church which was designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott, and a former Baptist chapel which closed in 1985. To the south of the village there are two unusual landmarks too, a Met Office weather station and an observatory. All sounds pretty cool, right? Let's go and find it all. We begin at one of Flaunden's two pubs, the Bricklayer's Arms on Hogpits Bottom. This was originally two cottages built in 1722 from local flint and brick, with a third dwelling added in the early 18th century. One of the cottages was a butcher's shop, with the other housing a blacksmith's forge. A village shop was also added in the late 18th century. Hogpits Bottom continues over Birch Lane, a dangerous corner according to this local sign. It's on this corner that we find a parish notice board. Now, if you're new here, finding these means leaving a card. One down and 15 to go in decorum. Otherwise, Hogpits Bottom is a long, narrow road with only a sporadic sprinkling of houses on either side. Flaunden Park is off this road too. It's a residential park home. In all, this area is pretty quiet, although if you walk around the village, you will hear one noise in particular up to every four minutes. So haven't seen a soul yet this morning and all I can hear really is the birds in the trees and big birds flying over overhead. We're not far away from London here and we must be on the flight path uh, to Heathrow Airport because there's been plenty of planes flying above me in the sky. Can't see them because it's too cloudy but they are there. If you can listen here, you can hear one going across right now actually. 
There you go, you see? Quite loud, quite loud. Our next job is to find a bridleway off to the left, which will take us towards the church. Now we're following a bridleway which runs parallel, almost, to Birch Lane, which is where this walk will finish. This takes us past some pretty lovely countryside. It ends up on Flaunden Hill. You don't realise it just by walking, but you're actually on top of a hill here. It was on this hill in 1838 that a brand new church was built. Dedicated to St Mary Magdalene, Flaunden's church was the very first one of many around the country that was designed by the architect Sir George Gilbert Scott. Scott was, in fact, a nephew of the then incumbent Reverend Samuel King. It was built to replace a medieval church about two miles away in the former Flaunden village. Nothing now remains of the earlier church, or indeed the settlement. This church was consecrated on the 19th of June 1838 by the Bishop of Lincoln. It's a single cell church with a porch, a vestry, a bell turret and lancet windows. The decorative flint work to the walls is reminiscent of nearby Amersham Workhouse. So, a couple of landmarks so far, but not really much in the way of a village, not many properties so far that we've seen on this route, but we're about to see a lot more. We're going to head now through what is the main sort of village cluster and head back up to the start again. There's still plenty to see, there's a playing field on this route, there's another pub to see, and a few other bits and bobs too. This is Flaunden's other pub, the Green Dragon. This one is a Grade 2 listed building dating back to the early 17th century. Much of its interior still contains its original timber frame. Among the Green Dragon's past clientele are two infamous figures, Nazi politician Joachim van Ribbentrop and Soviet spy Guy Burgess. Outside I found a lamppost, which I found to be quite interesting. It has a royal cipher, one that I had to research as it was unfamiliar. It belongs to William IV. This main street doesn't have an actual name, it's just known as Flaunden. Here's the old red phone box right next to another parish notice board. And this leads to a corner where Flaunden village crosses Birch Lane and Village Hill. I guess, if anywhere, this is what you would define as the village centre. Here's a wooden sign showing you some local places. This is a good illustration of how close Buckinghamshire is, given what's nearby. Well, seeing a wooden sign like that made me think I was in the East Riding, because we're used to seeing them out there, aren't we? But of course, uh, out here they must have them as well. Now, if you head south from here, you're heading towards something called Cheney's. Now, I'll be talking a bit more about that later in this video. But for now, we're heading towards the Village Hall. If we just turn the camera around, you can see the road runs off into the distance, doesn't really seem to go anywhere, but trust me it does. The village hall is just to the left there, and that's where we're going. Outside the village hall, there's a small war memorial. The hall itself is situated on the outskirts of the village and was built in 1972. It's been continually updated and refurbished over the years. It features a stage, a fully equipped kitchen and a very spacious car park. It's ideal for parties, business meetings and everything else in between. Next door there's a playground and a playing field. Around the back of all of this there's a footpath which forms part of the Chilton Way. There are several branches of this, meaning it runs for 177 miles in total. I somehow think this isn't going to be the last time we see this on our travels. And the end of the path brings us back to Flaunden Village again. Not much to say really about this area, but it's well worth admiring these lovely houses. Lastly, we turn onto Birch Lane, which runs downhill back towards the Bricklayer's Arms. There's one more landmark along here though, which I'm sure you're all going to like. So I was just about to wrap this main walk up as I headed back to the Bricklayer's Arms, but then I remembered there's one more thing we haven't yet talked about, and it's this building right here. It's an old chapel which is now a house, we've seen plenty of these in our time, and you can see part of the graveyard forms part of their garden now. At least I'll have no problem from the neighbours, eh? Okay, and we're back at the Bricklayer's Arms where we began. It's been about an hour's walk, that 
thoroughly enjoyed it. Now we're not quite finished with this place just yet because to the south of Flandern there are two major landmarks. One that I know I will be able to get access to, the other one it's a bit sketchy but we'll see if we can. One of them is a radar tower, a Met Office radar tower, the other one is an observatory. Let's see if we can find them both. Okay, so here we are then at the south of Flandern, uh, an area called Cheney's. Uh, there are two things, like I said, to see. We're on a bend in the road here. Now, one of them I can definitely get access to, and that's the Met Office radar tower. So we'll just follow this van up Cheney's Hill, and the radar tower is on the right-hand side up here. I can definitely see that because it's right by the roadside. The other thing, the observatory, is kind of behind these trees up a bridleway. Don't know how much I'll be able to see of it, but I'm going to attempt to walk down that bridleway and see if we can catch the observatory as well. Let's go for the radar tower first because that's the easiest of the two. This is the Cheney's Met Office weather radar. It's encased in a 12 meter high circular concrete tower with a concrete ring at the top and a covering dome known as a ray dome. Its history goes back to the 1930s. It was built as an RAF intercept station originally used by Bomber Command during World War II. It was repurposed in the 1950s as part of the Rotor Air Defense Program. By the 1980s it was used as a weather station and it remains as such today. There were other former RAF structures here, but they've now been demolished. Up a sandy bridleway nearby, there's a second dome building. This is an observatory used by the Southwest Hertfordshire Astronomical Society. Known as High Top, the site was donated to the society in 1974 and given its name by its first chairman, Jan Willemstein. High Top is equipped with an 11 inch Celestron Schmidt Casa Grain telescope mounted on a steel pier and housed in its own dome. It's what's known to the experts as a go to system. So we don't see many observatories, do we? But there's one right here to the south of Flandern. Worth the eight minute or so walk down the bridleway to get to, even though you can't really see much of it because of the trees it's obscured it's locked but uh, still an interesting landmark nonetheless and that really has been Flandern and I do hope you have enjoyed it and that's Flandern folks the first of the 16 in decorum is in the books there are 15 more to go and if they're all as fun as this one was then I'm going to love this series hopefully you will too this was a one-off for the moment but there will be more in this part of Hertfordshire soon you can bank on that I'll see you later Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. 
You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page, where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.